When this baby hits 600 watts. You're gonna see some serious shit. This is the Titan V. This graphics card was launched in 2017, five years ago. This actually came out before the 2000 series RTX cards. I got this card for $900 shipped brand new. I got really lucky on this one. I kind of swooped in on an auction. Um, these graphics cards have held their value more than any other card. And I found out why later. This was the last graphics card that Nvidia released with FP64 support, which means nothing for gamers. FP64 is double precision instructions, which is good for like weather forecasting and meteorology and deep learning that just things that we don't care about. No game uses it, right? So if you were doing that type of workload though, this thing is still more than twice as fast as an RTX 3090 Ti, right? In that one type of workload. That's why the value has held so strong with these cards, right? This was also the last card released that was a full 100 die. What does that mean? Well, Consumer cards go up from 107, 108-ish down there to 106, 104, 102. 102 is usually your 3080, 3090 Ti, 2080 Ti. These were all 102s, right? Usually the 104s are your 70 class card. 106 is your 60 class card for the most part. Now 100s were always reserved for the data center and usually they were so compute heavy that they had all of the gaming features stripped out of them. The GA100 die is only available to data centers, right? There's no display outs, there's no RT cores, none of that fancy stuff, right? It's only there for compute. Same, similar to this card. A 2080 Ti has 68 cores, shaders, compute units, etc. This has 80 of them. Anyway, why is that important? Well, this card is kind of evidence that Nvidia always has that 100 die in its back pocket just in case. Let's say for example, the 6900 XT, that has 80 compute units, right? Uh, same as this, same as the 3080 Ti, right? 80 cores, if you will. Now, what if the 6900 XT had 100 cores instead, and it beat the 3090 Ti handedly? What would Nvidia do in that situation? They can always release that 100 die monstrosity to the consumer in the form of a Titan and label it as professional, which also means it's the fastest gaming card too. The rumors for next generation, the uh, RTX 4090, they're saying that one's going to have 124 SMs. Now, how many SMs do you think the GA100 has, the Compute Ampere card? 128. Nvidia, if they wanted to, could release a 128 SM gaming chip if there was competition for it. So you can obviously see that this card has a blower cooler. It almost looks identical to the uh, Titan X 1080 Ti cooler, the 1080 cooler, right? That old style blower cooler. Looks beautiful, very piss poor for cooling. Now, this card also has a 300 watt TDP. You are not cooling 300 watts with a blower cooler. Never mind how much more power we're gonna push into this thing. Next problem, there are no higher power limit BIOSes that you can flash on this card. This card was an Nvidia exclusive card, no AIB model. So in order to increase the power limit for this one, we're gonna have to power mod it. Now for some reason, I don't know why, EK actually released Titan Volta water blocks. I couldn't believe it. Now, I got this from Performance PCs for 65 bucks because they're obviously five years old now, right? This was so old. I can actually, yeah. This was so old that the sticker is faded because it was sitting in a warehouse for so long because nobody bought these things, right? Who's going to buy a $3,000 Volta and water block it? It made no sense, but I got it for 60 bucks. All right, without further ado, let's time skip. I'm going to power mod this thing and water block it. 
Now, let's just take a second and appreciate this BFD, this big fucking die. GV100, baby. That That is the biggest consumer die that I think NVIDIA has ever released. Now, what do you not see on this board? Memory modules, right here. One, two, three, four. HBM modules. This is... This is the real deal. You don't you don't see HBM on consumer cards anymore ever. So this is this is uh this is the big dick energy right here. All right, so we got the card all water blocked and power modded. You could probably pause the video and zoom in on the shunts if you want to see it. My soldering skills aren't the best, but hey, what works works, right? Now, while we stare at this beautiful, beautiful B-roll with an EK water block, I just wanted to take a second to thank the supporters of the channel. Obviously, this one video costed me $1,000 to make. There is no imaginable way I could have ever made this content without the supporters. It is a dream come true to work with all of this old hardware that everyone has forgotten in time and giving it new life. Okay, so we got it in here. I added another 360 mil radiator on top here just to add some more cooling to be able to deal with the heat. Uh, we added an EVGA power booster here because we need to boost all the power to the, the turbo boost. We need to boost the boost, right? And uh, yeah, just about to fill it up. Everything fits great. Let's give it a go. So we're actually gonna check mining first. So I can tell the power mod is working because the power limit is all the way down. Um, board power draw, around 90 to 100 watts. What does it say here? 91, 100. Yeah, so this is before this was at 160. So it's showing 60 to 70 watts less than it was before. So I know the power mod is working. It's not quite half, it's about 40%. It depends how you look at it. 60% more allowable power draw. Look at those temperatures though. So we got GPU, we got 37 Celsius on the GPU and the memory temperature. So that was at, uh, man, that was like 67 before and this dropped 30 as well. So we got about yeah, oh yeah, almost exactly 30 Celsius drop across the board. So this is really exciting. We have to finally see what Volta can do. 92 hash now. So that's really, that's insane. That's pretty much almost 30, 80 levels. Let's see what the bandwidth is on this thing, actually. So this thing has... Yeah, 850 gigabytes a second. So this thing has about... 100 gigabytes a second more bandwidth than the 2080 ti and the 3080 so this is uh yeah this thing keep in mind this thing came out in 2017 this thing was way ahead of its time problem is though again does not support resizable bar so that's a big downfall of this thing right so i'm just starting off in heaven here but it looks like 2.1 gigahertz is about the max if i move it up any more the back will start artifacting and shit so 2.1 gigahertz is actually quite good this is the first iteration of the tsmc 12 nanometer node right and we know that 2080 ti's can cap out around 21 to 2200 right so this is i was expecting less than this to be honest that's actually really good now for power draw 230 times oh actually look at that it's kind of starting to starting to shimmer a little bit um that could be the hbm clocks too they'll have to find out but board power draw 230 times 60 percent so three it's pulling 370 380 watts right now uh total board power so more efficient than a 2080 ti how does that make any sense well hbm doesn't pull any power that's why right 
So now we're pulling about 420 watts. Oh, 270. Let's just check that out, actually. 270. 270. 1.6. Yeah, 400. 280, man. So we're actually, we're pushing 450 watts right now on this card in uh, Time Spy 1. Uh, that's, uh... That's impressive. So yeah, right around 450 watts was the peak for Time Spy 1. Let's uh, head over to Time Spy 2 here. Check the score out after. 275. 290! 300! Oh! Dude! It actually hit the power limit of the shunt for... Look at that, look at that! It actually hit the power limit of the power mod. Of the shunt mod. Unreal, dude. Time Spy is unreal. So what What even was that? 300 times 1 point. So yeah, that was kissing 500 watts in Time Spy 2. So yeah, we were pulling 500 watts out of a Volta. That's, uh, man, that's going to skew the score a little bit. I might have to go back and, uh, and double shunt it. Let's see what the score spits out anyway, though. I'm curious. Huh. So 16,000 graphics score. That's actually quite a bit lower than I was expecting. That's about 500 to 1,000 points less than a uh, maxed out power modded 2080 Ti. Pretty much, this is like a stock 3080, if you will, like a 350 watt 3080. So it looks like the Volta architecture is not the same as Turing. Turing is actually better because the 2080 Ti scores higher with only 68 SMs, right? But let's check out the, let's check out the Hall of Fame here. Oh yeah, check that out. So I'm actually ranked number 11 in the world with a Titan V. So clearly, yeah, so I guess that's actually pretty cool. I can probably, I kind of want to shoot for top 10. But um, yeah, so it looks like then it's actually slower than a 2080 Ti. So then let's just going, going forward here. I'm just going to compare it against the 2080 Ti. Forget the 3080. We already know it's slower. So let's actually go see how this thing does in real gaming. That's, but yeah, that's, the, that's really, that's super disappointing. I'm not going to lie. Super disappointing. So first up, I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider with high settings and all three resolutions. Both architectures and cards maintained consistent performance across the average and the 1% lows, pretty much identically. Um, and the Volta card tightened up that margin uh, closer to the 4K, the higher resolution. So 1080p plus 13% win goes to 2080 Ti, 1440p plus 10%. And then 4K, they're pretty much the same card. So whatever they did with Turing, it performs much better at lower resolutions than Volta does. Next up, I tried Horizon Zero Dawn Favor Quality. And this game just straight up did not like Volta at all. It got completely decimated by the 2080 Ti. Even has an 11% margin in 4K. But even then, you can still kind of see the same behavior where Volta lags behind until it hits that 4K, that higher resolution, then maybe the HBM kicks in and kind of carries the weight a little bit. All right, so by this point, I'm like, we tried a DX11 game. We tried a DX12 game. We have to try a Vulcan game. And Doom Eternal literally scales with everything. So this was also by far the worst showing, which makes absolutely no sense why volta would work so poorly in doom eternal this game is known to scale with every th every single architecture now my best guess is doom eternal here is the newest game that i tested so i'm thinking that maybe nvidia stopped driver optimizations for the volta architecture because the 40 percent victory here for the 2080 ti doesn't actually make sense architecturally like the clock speeds were the same the bandwidth was higher on volta where's that where's that 40 percent coming from has to be the driver 
I also tried Apex Legends and Overwatch, and it works well in those two games. It maxes, it maxes out the frame cap of both of those games, so there's no need for a chart for those two. So then we're going to try some Warzone here, because that one will scale with everything as well. So we're going to start off with 1080p here, and I must say this is far, far more interesting. They are pretty much neck and neck. The 2080 Ti actually has about a 10 FPS advantage in the average and in the 1% lows pretty much across the entire run. But look at this. Like I've said it before and I'll say it again. Warzone is one of the best optimized games in existence right now. Out of all the games that we've tested so far, it is the only one that has utilized the Titan V to its full potential matching the 2080 Ti. I don't know how the Warzone devs did it, but you can literally throw any graphics card at this game and it will use it. Now, quick 1440p check here and check this out. Volta is actually faster in Warzone in 1440p than a 2080 Ti. It's actually unbelievable out of all the games i test i tested a bunch of other games off the camera but there's no point in showing those results of all the games that i tested warzone in 1440p actually favors volta i don't even get it so overall kind of disappointing actually i always thought that volta and turing were a one-to-one -one kind of architecture but clearly that's not the case the 2080 Ti has 68 SMs and the Volta has 80 SMs and still the 2080 Ti beats it in every single gaming workload. So clearly there were some very significant improvements to rasterization performance going from Volta to Turing. I'm not sure what that could be though, cache or HBM latencies, who knows really, it doesn't really matter, but um, at least we can finally close the door on that chapter for Volta. It was not as good as I thought it was. The weird thing being in professional workloads, like mining is a professional workload, right? It is insanely more efficient than Turing and Ampere. Um, the thing hashes at 94 hash and it pulls 160 watts. It's very, very impressive. So unless you're looking to run a very efficient mining farm, or you really do need that FP64 for whatever workload you're working with, then Volta could be a factor. But for anything else, it's kind of obsolete now. But it does go to show you, though, that if NVIDIA actually cared, they released that architecture back in 2017, and it's still more efficient than cards coming out in 2022. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. I think we're almost at 15K, actually, subscribers. Let's push to 15, boys. Hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below what you thought about the Volta architecture. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.